An ocean full of treasure to plunder? A sea monster that can destroy your ship with a single hit? A pirate lord who rains poison from the sky? All of this and more awaits when Skull and Bones set sail on February 16th, welcoming you to the cutthroat world of the Indian Ocean set during the Golden Age of Piracy. While you start off as a shipwrecked outcast, you will fight, forge alliances, and make enemies as you build your empire and become a kingpin of the seas. And what then? Well, as a kingpin, you'll have the power to take on endgame events and challenges worthy of a pirate of your stature. But you will not remain unchallenged. Skull and Bones will make you fight to keep your power and influence over the riches in the Indian Ocean. In a recent co-op gameplay session, we had the opportunity to play around in Skull and Bones' endgame. Your level in the game is measured by infamy, and we were set at Kingpin, the highest ranking. Because of that, we had a substantial fleet of ships and weapons at our disposal to take on Skull and Bones' endgame loop, which is full of opportunities to take on legendary challenges, cement yourself as a powerhouse in different regions of the Indian Ocean, and even change up a few early game mechanics. One such opportunity is capturing manufacturers. Early in the game, you plunder outposts for valuable resources to upgrade items or complete contracts. Now, with world events like Hostile Takeover and Legendary Heist, more on those in a minute, you can take control of those manufacturers and make them work for you, making it a valuable asset to your empire. While you're off plundering unsuspecting merchants, it will passively earn you pieces of eight, a valuable currency used to buy rare and deadly black market items, such as the blueprint for a gun that can spit fire at your enemies. As you take over more manufacturers, you can set up your own trade routes and establish yourself as an economic powerhouse in different regions across the Indian Ocean. We were intrigued by the possibility of setting up our own production chain, so my party started a hostile takeover world event. We had a small fleet of ships to choose from, and we all picked the Brigantine, a DPS-class ship designed for high damage and a quick getaway, loaded it up with hard-hitting cannons and missiles, and set sail. In a hostile takeover event, you attack an outpost that has a production chain in order to, well, take it over and make it yours. Hostile Takeovers are a PvPVE event in which you have to take out towers on the land, survive attacking ships rushing to the outpost's defense, and fend off other players who have come to claim the manufacturer for their own. My approach was simple. Use powerful long-range cannons across my bow to inflict massive damage while enemy ships sailed into the harbor, use short-range cannons to weaken them further until they got close enough to board, or close enough to ram my bow into their broadside, which is incredibly satisfying. Like, really, really satisfying. Despite our best efforts, we received a notification that we had failed the mission, and another faction had gained control over the manufacturer before we did. It wasn't a total wash, however. Even if you fail a mission in Skull and Bones, there are still opportunities to take advantage of. In our case, the takeover turned into a plunder event, where the three of us faced off against waves of enemies and were rewarded with increasingly valuable loot at the end of each assault. It wasn't what we came for, but it was a great way to find our sea legs as a team and figure out how to work together in combat. Now it was time to try a new tactic to win a production chain, take part in a legendary heist. This co-op event is technically PvE, but there's still a chance for a dogfight against other players, but we'll get to that in a minute. We set our sights on taking out a merchant convoy, where we would steal their goods and transport them to, shall we say, an interested party? Knowing I would need a little extra cargo room and a lot more hull health, I switched to the Snow, a tank class designed to take a lot of fire, equipping torpedoes on my stern designed to sink anyone who tried to give me chase and steal the goods for themselves. We arrived at the scene shortly after another co-op party, our six ships working together to sink the target, all hoping we would win the cargo, or be able to steal it from the player who did. Even within a co-op party, only one person can carry the goods and get the reward. It's automatically onboarded to the person who dealt the most damage to the merchant vessel. In this case, me. Once those goods were on my ship, I turned and made for the delivery port as fast as the wind would carry me. The other party tried to take me out, but my teammates stayed behind and fought them off, giving me a chance to slip into the safe area of the outpost, deliver the goods, and claim the ultimate prize, the Rayofia Weaver Manufacturer. Time to see what we had fought so hard to win. 
It turns out the Rayofia Weaver was a white skull rum manufacturer located just north of the pirate den St. Anne, and it would net 60 pieces of eight per hour once up and running, a hefty sum for any kingpin. However, in order to collect these ill-gotten gains, it needed funding and sugarcane to start actually producing the rum. Silver I had to spare, but no sugarcane, so I would need to pilfer some and come back later. But before I could get to the sugarcane, it was time to go hunting. We picked up the Jaws of Retribution contract where we needed to find, kill, and deliver the eye of a Tylosaurus to another pirate. We tracked down the monster who could ram ships from the water surface or dive beneath the waves only to leap into the air and slam into your ship like a giant red wrecking ball. Getting hit by one of its aerial attacks is devastating and it sent me to my watery grave many, many, many times. Because the sea monster moves so quickly and in such a wide area, it was hard for the bark to land healing bombards, but by learning its attack patterns and communicating with one another whenever the beast was spotted, we were able to brace against its crushing blows and defeat it. We picked up its eye to finish the quest, along with some monster meat, which turned out to be an ingredient to make some tasty and stamina boosting Tylosaurus steak. Just then, a new world event began, the Tides of Terror. Each season of Skull and Bones will introduce a new pirate lord who, upon hearing of the rich bounty and opportunities in the Indian Ocean, has come from afar to steal their share by any means necessary. In season one, that pirate lord will be Philippe La Peste, a poisonous presence on the ocean. In the Tides of Terror event, we needed to take him out once and for all. After seeing the damage the Tylosaurus did to our party earlier, I decided to switch it up to a healing class, equipping the bark ship with long range weapons, close range cannons in case of a dogfight, and healing bombards. La Peste ship is a massive glowing green vessel and dealt heavy damage by raining poison down from the sky. Periodically, his ship would deploy floating bombs in the water, critical to dispatch before they sank one of our ships. Agility was key in this fight to avoid falling poison mortars and floating bombs, and sometimes friendly ships. But working together, using our combined firepower and healing abilities, we were able to sink the pirate lord and his massive ship to the depths. Victory was sweet and our waters were safe from La Peste once more, but there were still many lucrative opportunities on the horizon. We could collect our goods and supply the Rayofia Weaver with sugarcane, jump into the double or nothing Helm Wager plunder event happening on the north end of the map, or instigate another legendary heist to add to my production chain and set up a trade route. When you're a kingpin on the high seas, there's always another adventure waiting. The world events, ship classing and customization, and naval combat were just a taste of what Skull and Bones will have to offer when it launches on February 16th for Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, Amazon Luna, and PC through Ubisoft Connect and the Epic Game Store. You can pre-order Skull and Bones today at the Ubisoft Store, or sign up for a Ubisoft Plus premium subscription to get three-day early access.